Hey everyone, <laughs> I'm a little bit late today. I hope you guys can hear me in the music. Hey Nicole. And Sastella, can you, me, and Bella, and Ilya, and Miss Mess, and Ali, and Marie? Um, okay. I think what I'm going to do with this live stream is I'm going to have it up, and then I'm going to take it down, and then edit it, and then re-upload it. Um, just light editing. And clip out the best parts and the worst parts and whatnot. When do I hold these contests? What contests? I usually have like weekly challenges, but I haven't done any brief in the past like two weeks. The soundtrack right now is from My Hero Academia. Um, let me see. setting up my drive so that those of you in this live stream can get my brushes for free but only during this live stream <laughs> this is how I'm gonna do it for today I guess next for the next few anytime I decide to give stuff away in live streams later on I'm not sure how I'm gonna do it Uh, why does my chat box disappear? Will I ever use a drawing tablet? Um, probably not anytime soon, I don't plan on it. <laughs> Wait, you thought I was black what? <laughs> oh boy. Um... Let me put my brushes in. Good things come to those who wait, guys. And gals. The odd one's out. Yeah, it's, who, who doesn't know who that, who they are? It's like... That's the biggest, one of the most popular YouTube channels right now. Always entertaining animations. And stories. Okay, let me see. Get shareable link. Okay, so here's my link for my brushes. I'll be posting them every so often. So those are my hairbrushes, my Procreate hairbrushes that I'm giving to you guys for free since you came to the live stream. And it, when the live stream is over, the brushes will disappear, so make sure you get them in time. In a different program? Uh, sorry, I don't... I don't think these... First, I'm not going to use a different program, because... I don't have a different tool to record with, but these techniques will be applicable in any program. So, pretty much any program. The only thing is the brushes specifically, well, they don't exist outside of that, but... Can you guys access the brushes? Thanks, Jolene. How do you save the brushes? Um, that's like a whole video, it's worth of information. 
but you can look up some tutorials online of how to install Procreate brushes. Procreate manual should also show that as well. Okay, I think I'm ready to show everything. We're ready to start. Wait one second. <laughs> you already paint some stuff. Clip Studio Paint is a good program. I'm wondering why you guys keep asking about different programs. Is it that you don't have Procreate or you don't have an iPad? I guess it's both if you don't have an iPad. Um, okay, now to use my own music. Nope. One second. <laughs> I forgot about that. I need to get my music ready. It's so eerily quiet. Apologies. Oh, that's good enough to start out with. And we're starting very soon now. Oh wow, it turns out it's like 10 whole minutes late. There's a live chat. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna take away the cover now. Here we are. Okay. Hey everyone, it's me, Ergo Josh, and I wanted to do this live stream instead of like a full on YouTube video today because um, there's a lot to it and um, <laughs> I wasn't sure if I was ready to make a whole entire video um, on my techniques just yet because I had some other things to focus on. Um, so I'm going to talk about the four main topics, I mean the four main methods I have to do hair. Um, this is my latest piece that I made. Um, where I focus mostly on the hair, just an example of um, what I can do. Like this is my best work at the moment, I guess. <laughs> this is like a very quick sketch of hair that I've done um, recently. And um, let's see, another good example. This is kind of a good example. This is very brush heavy, but yeah. So I'm gonna get into the methods that I have, and then I'm going to talk more about the actual, I'm gonna show you some examples. So let me actually pull this up, go to my images. So I got some references. Uh, these are the references we'll be looking at. Um, each one of them is gonna be you can use all of my techniques on these, but each one of them is going to focus mostly on one of the techniques. Um, but at first, I'm gonna tell you what they are. So let's go to basic canvas size. I usually use 4,000 pixels by 4,000. Um, let me read the chat. Uh, can I animate on Procreate? Uh, theoretically, but it'd be really hard for anyone to animate on Procreate. That was Death Note. You already noticed that quickly. <laughs> um, iPad is better. It depends on your own personal needs. I'd say they're equal for the most part. Um, yeah, okay. So the first method is called the chunk method. Excuse my terrible handwriting. So we're gonna make that really big. So this method is for, let me actually pull up the image. Oh, in case you guys are wondering, that's also a question I get a lot. How do I do the split screen? When you're on your iPad, you tap the bottom line, you scroll up once, it turns black, you do it again slowly, you bring up the bar, make sure your photos is there. Then you hold it and drag it up to the left. Then once that happens, you let go. And then that's that. And then all I do is just swipe to the one I want and then make it bigger. And I can also do this, make it half size. So you can see like that. 
So that's how I make my screen that size. Uh, split, um, for that you guys can see the reference that I'm looking at at the same time. Um, no, I don't think you can use Procreate brushes in Clip Studio Paint, but I know you can use... I think you can use Photoshop brushes in Procreate, I think. I'm not sure. Um, so the chunk method is basically breaking it up into um, chunks like you hear a lot of artists talk about. Um, this is the first tip that you hear a lot of people talk about. You basically will take the overall shape and break it up into simple shapes that you can understand. Um, so for example, I'm going to focus on this part of his hair. So overall, let's just look at it overall. There's, I can break it up into chunks like this. So this is going to be the corner of his face like that. I can notice that there's a big kind of shape like that there. I can see another one kind of curving around. Um, make it a little bit bigger. You can see that there's also an area in the back, back there. So I'll do that. This is all very loose. Um, I can see another chunk going back like that. Um, and then you can go back and you see there's this shape like this. Actually, what I'm going to do to make it easier for you guys to see is I'm going to bring the picture of that guy in here. Like that. this okay I'm gonna decrease the uh, opacity no, I don't need this as much so if we're gonna look at chunks you can see this is how I would break this shape up right you you need to be able to kind of imagine them as these big shapes and this is important because it's not just a way to simplify it, but it's going to tell you how to um, do the lighting. It's going to teach you how to make sure the hair flows properly, which is one of the big things that I get um, got from when I was asking people, what is so hard for you to understand about it, um, about hair? And a lot of people are like, oh, the flow, I don't really get that very much. So one of the tips I also have is to try not to do like how I just did. If you're going to draw a line like that, try not to do it like if you're going to do a curve, try not to do it like that, where it's wobbly. Try to break it up into shorter strokes and be quick. And don't be afraid to undo um, if you don't like it. Because it's better to have um, strokes that you are confident with rather than hesitant strokes. So that looks better than this line that I drew over here, which is very rough. I'm going to erase that and kind of show you the contrast. So if it's quick, it's not perfect, but that's good because we don't need to be super perfect. We want to make sure our lines look good. So you can kind of see the shape is really easy to see here. So that wasn't perfect, but I like the shape of it. So yeah, getting those quick lines down. And I'm um, just going to do the whole thing. Breaking it up into bigger chunks. So you can kind of see there's this line here and everything starts to layer over that, right? So if we hide the guy's face, um, we can see that we're, we're looking for a pattern. So this is kind of the second thing that, um, this is the first thing that chunk helps you with. So doing the chunk method helps you get the flow and it helps you understand the direction of the hair. So we see all these chunks are having the same curvy shape. So now when I see this kind of curve, it's kind of weird. I can come back and say, well, let's make it a better shape that's easier to understand for anyone who's looking at your work. So these shapes kind of all flow together. I would kind of get rid of a kink like that because that's not really natural to how hair flows. Hair is very soft and um, smooth. It's almost, you can almost think of it like water. Um, and it just flows across his head like that. So I think this is a pretty good balanced shape, and of course it is because I basically traced it. Um, but if we want to zoom in, you can continue to 
use the chunk method to help you get even more details when you're using your reference. So if I hide this and I go back here and we look at this area, we see this piece that was the first chunk, right? And so I can look and see, okay, there's kind of a cut right there. And so I can keep going and we can see that there's another shape like this that comes down on top of that other chunk. So I can do that and I can keep going and I see there's another kind of little tuft of hair that's curving over that one. And so this is a technique I use very often to continue to, continue to add detail to the hair. Um, so if we go back to one of the examples I did later, I mean before, um, one of the chunks was this piece and then I broke it down in half, I cut it again. Um, if we look at another one, this whole part of the head was one chunk that I cut into three, so one piece going back, one piece in front, and one piece in the middle. Um, you can see the top of this head, this was all one chunk when I used my first brush stroke, and then I broke it in half like that. So let me see if I can actually show you the time lapse for that. So if we go back to when I first started doing the hair, really quickly, so it's more evident over here, you can see that really big brush stroke that I did. Like that was basically me setting up the chunks, but I didn't need to use lines at first because I've done this quite a few times. Um, but I did use lines to show the biggest chunks, which are those right there. So I broke it down and made it simple because the reference was much more complex. Um, so if we go back to this one, so, so the chunk method helps you getting the shape right, it helps you get the flow right, and the other thing it does is it helps you get the lighting right. So to show that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this black and white so that's easier for you guys to see. And I'm going to go ahead and pick a brush. Let's use a one of my volume hair brushes. Um, so, what breaking it down into chunks does is it helps you understand how to light it. So it's just like the basic, you know, a circle, a ball that you use. And so, let's imagine there's a light source pointing at the ball, right? There's a bright spot, there's a core shadow, we all know this, right? We've all heard this in like your first day in art class. There's a coarse shadow here and all that, and then you kind of make it a gradient, there's a reflected shadow. Well, that happens with hair too, even though it's made of these tiny little strands. So it's really easy to just go ahead and let's say for, for this chunk right here, it's helpful to just render these chunks out first by thinking of them as just these big shapes that need to have light. So I can start adding value to the dark part here and the dark part here, and then the highlight is going to be in the middle. So what I do is add, I'm actually gonna do shade the whole thing because it's always good to not have white as your starting point. And then I'm gonna add darkness here. And I like this brush because it already starts to look like hair and I like to use this as one of my starting out brushes. Um, it's called the Volume Brush if you downloaded my brushes, which I'm gonna post right now, actually. If you guys haven't seen that already, the link I posted is a link to my hair brushes, which you can get for free for the duration of this live stream only. So, <laughs> Alfonso, you're not fooling anyone. What model does the Pencil One work with? Every, the the Apple Pencil 1 works with um, all the models that support the pencil except for the newest um, iPad Pros that were released back in 2018. Um, what else? <laughs> the music got all jumpy and happy like So yeah, starting out with the 
dark at the bottom corners and then leaving the highlights in the middle. And it also helps if you want to add more highlights back, you can use the eraser tool to get some of that back. I have this on really low opacity. And so basically what we're doing is rendering it as this big shape without any, we're not trying to think about the hair too much. We're just trying to look at it as this one big shape that we can um, render out. I'm going to use my blending tool, which I really like to use with hair. And so this is a really good base when you're using the chunk method, because what you can actually do here is start to use smaller brushes or more finer detailed brushes um, to get that detail in. So this brush is called the chunk brush. <laughs> and what I'll do here is add those kind of like those lines where it starts to connect with the top of the hair head. And a tip to make sure it looks right is you see how they're curving down into the scalp. You want to make sure you copy that smooth stroke. You don't want to make strokes like that or be too lazy with your strokes. You want to follow the shape of this. Um, you want to think of it as like a piece of Play-Doh almost. And see there, they come back and connect to the root of the head. So I'm just going to do that there gives you a sense of that. So you can see this already looks like hair if we zoom out. Um, I'm going to start to add a little bit of darker values in between these kind of make-believe strands. See, when I draw a stroke like that, I don't want my next one to cross over them. You want to try to make them all continue in the same line. And then I'm going to add some lighter hair strands on top use a lighter color and then what I can come back and do is use the blending tool again with the same brush and kind of blend them into each other and this is a technique I used a lot on the uh, white-haired girl I showed you So it's a really easy way to get hair to look right and start understanding where your lighting needs to be. So that would be like the base of it. And then what I recommend you do after this um, is you start doing some manual details. So I'll get just a standard brush like my pencil eraser brush and I would start adding some unique hairs. Make this smaller getting some hairs that don't really follow the rules. Um, look for where the shadows are. There's some deeper shadows every now and then inside of his main hair, right? So I'd add those in, see where this curve is and kind of follow that. And it's all because we're all able to do this and start off doing this hair because we started off making a shape and making it um, something easy that we can understand. And so I'm noticing here there's kind of a bend in his hair that I want to show off more. So I'm going to add a highlight here and bring the highlights to a kind of sharper end. So I'm going to take my soft, soft brush, <laughs> soft brush, and um, I'm going to try to bring the highlights to end sharply like that. So now it looks like the hair is bending. I'm going to add those creases that I saw in there. Um, but yeah, this is kind of as far as we can go because we made the initial shape super, super um, basic. If we were to keep detailing the extra shapes that I did over here and then go back and start doing this method, it would start looking a little bit more realistic. Um, what I would do to start getting this to go forward is to add some of that dark, bring some of that dark value in, some of that random dark value, and so now the hair looks like there's a little, it goes up, there's a little crease in there, and then that part is higher up, and come back with my pencil with a lighter tone and start to show off those highlighted areas. Is working with too low opacity. 
Depending on the hair that you're drawing, you may want to use a hairbrush, like the fine hairbrush. I try to use these as, at the end or as little as possible because it's easy to use them too much. And I try to only use these in the highlight areas um, because that's where hair is going to have the most detail. Well, not the highlight areas, the mid-tone areas. The hair will have the least detail where it's very dark. So see, you can't see any strands over there. And it's going to have the least detail where it's super, super bright. So like here is probably the brightest spots of its hair. But you're going to see the most detail where it's kind of mid-tone. So that's where you want to use brushes like this super fine hair brush. So like that. And I wouldn't try to, you know, do a stroke like that because remember we're trying to show the hair has kind of waves up and down. So I would try to use smaller strokes and very lightly let them taper off like that. So, and then if things kind of look like they're too patchy, you can always take one of the hairbrushes and then lightly blend them back in place like this. Like that. As, as I always like to say, hair is something that I like to use as an illusion and I don't want to draw every single strand. Um, I want to let the brushes work with me as much as I can. This is something that even traditional artists will do, depending on the hairstyle. They're not going to paint every single hair stroke. They're going to use these same methods. They're going to take different kind of materials to scrape and pull at the paint and different things like that. And so that's basically what we're doing here. So I'm going to look at the comments really quick and see what, if you guys had any questions. Please share my sketch brushes. <laughs> no, this is just the hair tutorial. You can't, you want to download them on mobile? Um, yeah, that's going to be hard because I don't know what device you have. It might be difficult to transfer them. I'm not sure what it would be like if you have Google, if you, I think you would need Google Drive and then you would have to use Procreate to import brushes from Google Drive. So let me actually see if I can do that for you guys right now. So I can click plus, I can click import and you can see some of my old art there. And um, yeah, I don't think Google Drive is an option here. So you might want to download them to your computer and put them onto the I on your iPad category, um, which is basically where all this stuff is. Because if I go back, you can see there's folders and then you can put stuff there when you connect it to your computer. Um, but yeah, I think that would be the best way to get your brushes. Or you can put them on your iCloud drive. That would work too. But yeah, that's how you get your brushes into Procreate. You go to the brushes. Um, let me go back outside. Go to your brushes, you're in the brush library. You click the plus icon, then you click import, and then you would find whatever folder they're in, and then you would just import them that way. Yeah, you can also use Drop. I know Dropbox has a setting in there as well iPad mini? Yeah. I, I say like it, I say for me, I size is not nearly as important as having a screen. Um, I would have traded, uh, let's say I had a Wacom tablet. If the Wacom tablet was only half the size, I would trade it for something even half that size if it had a screen, because being able to see what you draw is a really important skill. It's like a muscle memory thing, and it's really important to develop as you're drawing. And spending years drawing, looking at a different screen and drawing on one screen, it's just not, you're not going to advance as fast as I, I think you could. Link to the picture references? Yes, that would be my Pinterest page. So let me get that for you. I don't include too many links in the description because um, YouTube tends to... Oh, that's interesting. I see your picture here, Marie. 
on my Pinterest page. I don't know why. Um, but YouTube tends to uh, get upset if you have too many links in your description. <laughs> I'm going to say it as simply as that. Um, okay. Let me actually take you directly to my hair board. I'm not sure if it has all of these references, but I think it has most of them. So that's my Pinterest board for hair. for other questions every strand yeah don't don't do that because it's it's so busy and it's going to <clears throat> gonna wear you out a lot Is no one able to download the, the brushes? Because I'm, I'm not sure if people are able to download them or not. Because it says um, anyone with the link can view. Oh, you did get them? Okay, good. Cool. Alright, so I think this is um, pretty much what I can tell you about the chunk method. So now I'm going to move on to the second method, which is the silhouette method. So, and these will get progressively a little bit more complicated. So the chunk method is the easiest in my opinion, and the silhouette method is going to be a little bit harder. So let me just write chunk again actually, just so I have something to use later on. Okay. I have such bad art handwriting and I'm supposed to be like an artist. Okay. Now this method is silhouette. Let me make sure I can spell silhouette properly. <laughs> There we go. All right, so the silhouette method. Let's let's bring this lovely gal into Procreate. So the silhouette method. So this method is all about exactly what it sounds like. You focus on the overall shape of the entire hair as a starting point. Um, so for the silhouette method, all of this would basically, you start out with it being, that brush is too blendy. <laughs> Uh, let's, let's use a flat brush, yeah. You start out with something that's black, pitch black or whatever color you want in the center, and you focus on the edges of the hair. So for afros, I feel like this is one of the best ways to start afros, and that's why I have that. Because afros, most of what your most of the detail and the interest is going to be on the edges and the ends. So that's where you want to focus your detail in. So I'm going to start off using a bigger brush um, and kind of get that in loosely. Right? I'm going to use very quick strokes like this. 
And because of the texture of the hair, I'm using my mix brush. I'm just tapping. I just want a very rough kind of understanding of the shape of her hair. Like that. So I'm just going in roughly outlining the uh, the shape of her hair overall, getting a silhouette, exactly like the name of the technique sounds like. And then I'm going to try my best to fill in the empty areas. The silhouette method is a little bit harder because you need to spend quite a bit of time doing this. and. If you don't get it right, um, it will already start looking fake. So there's a lot of like short haired girls that have black hair. Um, let me actually show you that on my Pinterest. Uh, I think I turned off Wi-Fi on this. Hopefully I'll, I'll turn it on and hopefully nothing comes up. I don't want you guys to see. <laughs> um, let's go to Pinterest and see some examples. Um, so on my hair board, a good example of another way to do, like this would be a good example for the silhouette. This is really complex. You don't want to approach that immediately. You want to get that really frizzy outline done first because a nice pitch black drawing of a frizzy outline still looks good and is usually, you'll see a lot of artists actually do that to draw afros. They won't even get the detail in the center because the outline of the afro is the most iconic part of it. Um, for hair like, where is it? For hair like this one is also good to do the silhouette because if you can think about it, if all of this was just pitch black, it would still look a lot like hair because of how free the strands fall around her face. And so if you can get the silhouette done of how the strands fall without even worrying about the lighting and the overlapping hair strokes, it will already look like hair. And so that's why um, the silhouette method is a little bit harder, but still just as rewarding. So let's go back here. Yes, I am using paper like right now. I didn't take it off. <laughs> it's still on. But as you can see, it's quite, it's, we're probably gonna hear less of the noise. Oh, thanks, Marie. Yeah, it'll work if anyone copy and pastes it. I wish there was a way to check how many people have downloaded it, but oh well. So that's a very basic outline. So what I'm going to do is hide this. Um, you can see the silhouette already because of how loosely I did it. If I zoom out, it, you can, it's pretty much identifiable as hair. I mean, it already looks like that. I'm just going to increase the size of the brush and lightly tap to get some more fidelity. Excuse me. Okay. No problem. The pencil sketch brush is on my gumroad. Actually, I'm gonna show you guys that right now. Uh, my chat keeps disappearing. <laughs> All right, let's go. I know, right, Max? One of my friends at work was just like, you're always drawing these pretty girls, Josh. And I'm like, all right, I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna draw some pretty guys for you. <laughs> um, all right, so now what I'm gonna do is the silhouette is still not done because these really nice little, thin little hairs right there. <laughs> you see that comment? Okay, I'm gonna turn Wi-Fi off right now. Um, these these hairs we really wanna show in the silhouette. So I'm gonna take a, my pen pencil brush and kind of start just playing around, getting a feel for it, being loose, not really worrying about trying to copy it exactly, but being natural, you know?
So I'm actually, I think I'm just gonna work on a certain area. I'm gonna work on this area to show you that because it would take forever if I tried to do the whole entire head for this live stream. So I'm just gonna work on it. It's like kind of relaxing. You don't really have to worry about lighting or anything yet. Just use, loosely use the reference as a guide. see that texture from our mix brush has done a lot of work for us getting that that kind of frizz in there I can come back with it and tap a little bit to really get that frizz in but I'm also going to come back manually and add those little fly fly away hairs <laughs> Not really the right term for this kind of hair, but... And then I'm just gonna loosely kind of scribble like this to get that kind of hair, that look. And just layer it on. Straight hair? Yeah, that's next. I think. Kind of. Straight hair is like the easiest hair to do. The brushes I use for straight hair are for the um, third most complex technique, which is called layers. So if we zoom out, you can see it's really starting to look like that afro hair. Um, if you really want to get it to keep looking good, you can kind of blend out a little bit of your strokes that you've done so far, and then go back in and add even more um, detail. And every time you do that, I recommend you use a smaller, thinner brush. Thanks, Ariana. Glad to help. All right, so yeah, there's that part. So let's get into the lighting of this. So this isn't really, once you've done that, that's pretty much the silhouette method. Um, if I were to draw this woman's face in and still leave the hair, like at least to this detail, it would still look pretty good. And I actually think I have an example of when I did that a long time ago. So I was much worse at art. <laughs> this is, this was a while back, but I think you still get the idea. Like this is still really bad. This doesn't look natural at all, but. <laughs> You, you get the idea, like, this is just so bad. Why is this crease so sharp? But, yeah. It's still, at a glance, it looks okay because it's not so important about the lighting. It's more, what's more important is the, um, the shape of the hair. So we know it's big, we know it's wild, and we know there's some loose strands, and so that's what's important. Oh, did I draw another girl like that? I did one, but I don't think I colored her hair in but it's a good example of what I was trying to say. So like here, this was like way back and this is actually pencil on paper that I scanned in. But again, just the overall kind of loose shape, just to really drive the concept home. Um, did I do it again with another example of the silhouette method before I go into details? This is kind of another example. So here you can see this hair is pitch black and I wasn't really good at it, but I tried. This is when I was kind of figuring out the silhouette method, but you can see I got all of those lines in that really sell the hair as what it's supposed to be from the reference. And if you zoom out, it looks fine. Then I started to add slight gradations in the hair to really show you what it is, but you probably can't see that because my camera isn't picking it up. But yeah, I'm gonna hide this overlay now. Let's go back, finish it up, or 
or finish it. I'm just going to work on a portion. So for these lighter parts, we're going to go back to the mix brush. This isn't actually a hair brush, but for afros and stuff, it's like super, super helpful. So we notice that if we kind of go back to our, to our chunk method, you can break up the hair in half, basically. So there's a line where the hair pretty much stays pitch black. That's pretty much everything under here stays pretty much pitch black. So we want to know that and we're going to take this mix brush and we're lightly going to tap with a lighter gray um, areas that we want to show the brighter parts of the hair coming out because it's higher up. So we're just going to tap these little tufts of hair that are really high up. And come over here and do some near the edge. light into the silhouette um, about, do you mean light that's coming from her body back into it um, you would really do the same thing I mean it's not really visible in this reference but any light that would come back to the hair that actually lights it up you would see there's a little bit like I didn't mean literally like there's this dark area down here there is going to be some slight um, tufts of hair that are visible but you would just be very, very, like, you probably can't see, but you would be very light with them and use a color very close to the same color as the silhouette. And so once you've done that, then you would come back with a darker color and a smaller brush and kind of refine it and add more and more kind of fidelity to it. And you would kind of shape some areas, there's like these little strands that kind of come down like that. So I would kind of shape that here. I forgot there's no eraser tool, I just have to keep painting black or light. Blend some of it out. You want to try to use avoid using the blending tool because it's going to make the hair look too smooth for this type. I use a lot of tapping for this kind of hair. Then I would manually go in with the black and add some really fine larger details. Kind of scribble like this to give it a lot of really fine um, kind of details and what's the word? Even though our hair isn't curly, if we keep doing this, it's going to and combining with the other brush strokes. It's going to start to look um, like the real thing.
And then, once you've done like your first color pass, you can come back and add even brighter tones if the hair gets that bright. It doesn't in this reference, really. I think I've already kind of used the brightest areas. But if you look at my Pinterest again, Pinterest is acting up. Oh, I turned my Wi Fi off. <laughs> If you look at Pinterest again, where is the girl that had more hair? Where'd she go? Did I pass her? Oh yeah, she has like some places where the hair is very bright, so you'd come back later after doing... Um, oh, all the mid-tone hair isn't showing up, but there's a lot of like semi-bright areas right here. And then you've got some really bright areas over here, so you would do these areas first and do them under those. Um, and so I think that's a good segue into the layering method. Um, so I'm going to do that next. Um, before I do that, I'm going to look at the comments or the live chat to see what you guys, if you have any questions. So committed to art. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I love it. Because <laughs> basically, I'm just sharing sharing with you guys what I have kind of discovered that helped me out. Because I still didn't think I was that good at hair yet, but a lot of people were like, "Well, for me, there's something that you can help me with." So it's like, "Well, why not share what I have if it can help someone?" I would, Cody, um, but it's from a company called Epidemic Sound, so it's not really a playlist on YouTube that I can easily just show you. Will I ever do eyes? Yes. I'm definitely planning to do, like, because I like very stylized views. You have school tomorrow. <laughs> but yeah, I have a, a very stylized way of doing eyes. stream right now oh wow 130 people jeez thanks <laughs> oh boy i haven't had that many ever i think um let me see any more questions large soft brush with low opacity that's always useful hey sammy hitting new records self-portrait and not tell us <laughs> No. Um, you're from the Czech Republic. Hey, uh, Simon? Yeah, layers are very useful. Um, yeah, don't, don't get confused by them at all. Okay. So, let me see. Thanks, uh, Fokisowa. Fokisowa? I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Thanks, Simon. Um, so with the layer method, it's... How do I explain this? So you, ba you it's literally based on using layers because the hair is very complex. And so hair like this, you can see there's a lot of parts going over each other and overlapping the, each other. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to focus on this small area um, because if you look at this entire thing, it would just it would just get take way too long. So if we look at the reference, I'm going to kind of illustrate to you what parts are kind of behind. So the parts that are in the far background would be. Whoa, it's way too bright. 
I mean way too large, would be like this, right? Those are the hairs that are the farthest in the background. And then, um, I would use another layer for hair that's um, in the kind of mid-ground. So that's going to be this kind of stuff right here. Right. And if I... You can kind of combine this. You can see how you could easily combine this with the silhouette method in the beginning. So that's like the hair in the mid-ground. Um, it would also be this chunk right here. And like this right here. And then the foreground, I try to limit it to three layers, um, but sometimes the hair needs more if there's like a big braid. You want to keep that above everything else. And then on the very top of things, you see these kind of strokes that are coming from the top of the head. So I would keep them here. Um, there's also a stroke coming here, so I'm going to use a different color to help you guys see that. It's not bright enough. It's not showing up. Um, there's a stroke coming like this. And like that. Um, I think there's also another one. Yeah, I think that's good enough to show. And I'm actually going to take the background layer and darken it. So that's kind of how the layer method works. So you have three layers that you focus on. But how do you actually do it? Well, that's a little bit harder. So if we look at it as a whole, you can see there's these thicker strokes um, of really bright hair that are on top. Those are the hairs that you would draw on the top. And But you wouldn't do these first. You would do the base layer first. And so with the base layer, you would focus on, well, where is the hair the darkest? And you see that's over here in the back. So I would immediately start to set up um, more of a darker tone in this area. This brush works like a paintbrush where you have to use a lot of strokes to get a lot of value done. And you would kind of start out doing the silhouette method, to be honest, because you want these dark tones to show up um, under the lighter areas because they're always there. Like, even though this is the brightest part of her face, you still see this really dark area in the back. Oh, am I on the wrong layer? I'm on the wrong layer. Okay. <laughs> Let me just select all this stuff. Swipe down with, swipe down with three fingers. Uh, cut. Go back to my base layer. Swipe down with three fingers again. Paste. And now it's on the right layer. And so that's the risk with doing this technique. You really need to pay attention to your layers. And if you've been doing digital art, you know that it's easy to go for like, even up to an hour sometimes, working on something, and then you realize it's all on the wrong layer. <laughs> And if you have a lot of layers, that can be really annoying. So I'm going to focus on this kind of back hair portion. And so this is where you would kind of introduce kind of some of the silhouette method to get those um, flyaway hairs that are in the back. I'm doing this very loosely just to convey it. I would, I would spend a lot more time trying to get those lines correct. first hour. Let me include the brush, the link to my brushes one more time. Um, get a shareable link. Okay, there we go. 
So that's a link to the brushes that I use for hair. Um, so you would do that for like the background layer. And then for the mid-ground layer, so to pick that color again, I would start adding these, start drawing the hair strokes that aren't as bright. So like not these ones that are super bright, but the ones that are kind of like this color, just the ones that you see, that you can actually see. Um, anything that you can actually see that isn't just too dark and fading into the background. So here usually I would have done the chunk method before that to identify all of the chunks and then choose which ones to um, put into which layer. So I'm starting out with a few here. Like this. I'm actually gonna use a bigger, I'm gonna use my chunk brush to kind of show this faster. Now don't do this if you're drawing here. Be, be much more intentional about identifying each shape and use quick strokes to do it. So like, let me do that for example. Like that's a good one. And I would work on that and add all of the hairs that kind of flow along with that. Um, but I'm just trying to quickly get something down so that you guys can see the point. But I think for some of you, even doing this is going to help you <laughs> with your art because it was, it's pretty helpful for me. Once you have a technique to use, hair can seem not super difficult anymore. And you'll see I'll be spending much more time on each step as we go because these steps are for reserved for more difficult hair types. This does get warm, but it's not, I don't know if I don't have sweaty hands, but it does get warm, but I also, it's also good to use a hand guard if you're doing this kind of stuff. And notice, even though this is the layer method and I'm literally using layers, I still let some of my strokes overlap each other because it always, getting a little messy always helps with keeping hair looking organic instead of robotic and uh, fake. So it's okay if you have to blend something to get to something sometimes. But for super complex hair like this, it's always good to have this method. As a guide. It won't open on my device? No, it's only for the live stream. If you can get on your computer, you can download them. Yeah, I, I would have a website, but... Um, my website's like dead right now. I haven't touched it in a long time. Yeah. Yeah, Lisa, I've done one for lips. That's exactly how I plan to do stuff. Like, I like to do things um, in very bite-sized pockets. Yeah, my overlay right now. Okay. Oh, almost at 140 people. So I think this is good enough to show most of the hair. So, and then I'll come and do the top part of the hair on another layer. And I would pick the lighter brush. And I'm setting this all as kind of a base. I think for this hair, it wouldn't be too bad to do a third layer that's even darker in between the mid layer and the base one. So. Most of the top hairs are in the middle. 
in the, in the front, so I'm going to kind of make up some of the hair. See, like, getting hair strands like this and working on those and blending them and getting them to look realistic with the hair under it is really tough. So hair like this is, is really, you like, it's really super helpful to be able to use layers. This is an advantage we have over people who use traditional art. <laughs> and with the hairs that are on the top, you want to kind of show them moving up to where they originated from because since they're on the top, you can see the whole entire strand of hair. You don't really need to worry about where the hairs on the layers under it start from. Now some of the hairs though, like this one that's catching a lot of light, you can recede it back into the darkness there. But the ones that are on top of the head, you really wanna show, hey, where is it coming from? as part of helping everything look realistic. And I'm gonna avoid using them in the back because that's where the hair starts to, the head starts to curve around and it's not getting nearly as much light as the hairs in the front. I'm gonna use, and again, this is where you wanna feel free to use uh, finer brushes once you start detailing stuff. So as you can see, this is starting to look pretty much it's very close to the hair that she has. And we're not worried about messing it up because we can take the part down and focus on that, take that away, focus on the bright hair. And let me actually do what I suggested myself to do, which is to add some, some darker hair shadows, if you will. These are going to be subtle. Just add more depth. And make it more clear that the hair is turning a corner. A little bit darker. Oh, it's not it's not what I'm doing. Okay. And with both extremes, the darkest hair and the lightest hair, you don't want to go too extreme with how many strokes you're using. Because you don't want them to overpower the mid-tone hair. I'm going to test something out really quick. I'm going to duplicate this just so I can give the hair more volume. Maybe shift it a little bit. Oh, that looks weird. I'll rotate it. I don't recommend doing that, but I just did that just so that you guys can see more of what I mean by when I say I want the darkest hair and the lightest hair shouldn't be super, um, shouldn't be the most hair. The, the most hair should be in the mid-tones. Um, so if I can go ahead and let's go ahead and um, group all of these and then duplicate that group. Let's flatten it, let's hide the reference, and let's make this black and white so it's much easier to see what's going on here. Then we can go back and mess with the um, curves. I'm gonna kind of even things out a little bit. And you can see that looks a lot more like hair now, that it's a realistic colors. And you can see we have all these interesting um, layers. And then if you wanna go back and add some dark in here, if we don't have to merge it like we did, we could have just did all of those um, 
color changing effects or start with black and white in the first place but we could go back if we still had the layers and add some darkness here erase something there and keep working at it till we can get something that looks like this um, and it can be abstracted version of it but it's still um, going to do its purpose when we want to show the rest of the face so to kind of help you guys finish finish everything off and help you visualize it I'm going to quickly do a sketch of where her head was um, We didn't really do the top of the head, but I think it's easy for you guys to see now. Um, how the hair would look <laughs> Even though there's hair in front of her face over there. Let me erase that Yeah, if we wanted to finish that we would have like really awesome hair and then the head to go with it So I'm going to set up the next and final hairstyle. I mean hair technique, which is the hardest and um, Before that I do that. I'm going to look at the comments Uh, I always hide the, the chat box. Uh, no problem. Enjoy the brushes. Um, this one is called ghost method so this is the hardest one because it doesn't have any specific <laughs> it requires a lot of previous skill to do the ghost method or not really skill but experience drawing you need to have drawn a lot of hair to be able to do this method well you love drawing hair? Oh, wow. I really don't like it and most people don't, but <laughs> I prefer hands and feet over drawing hair. Oh, he heard his name. <laughs> Ghost, reason why people draw anime hair instead. Yeah, anime hair does look really inter entertaining. Grabs his hand with the left hand. <laughs> yeah. Lots of people from Turkey. Oh, wow. Yeah, like a few weeks ago, it was like India was like super. I was being shown to a lot of people from India. Hello, El Neil. Um, struggle with coloring the skin. Yeah, I struggle with color in general. <laughs> I will be able to help you with that for a little while. You just got your new iPad Pro. Congrats. Nice. Hands. <laughs> Big mood. For me, they're way more simpler because it's like you just follow the you follow the the steps and you get it right. Hair, it's like super messy. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna hide the overlay really quick. Hi from Bulgaria. Hey, Nikolay. Okay, so for the ghost method, um, the ghost method is really just everything else 
combined. Um, you want to turn the volume down? Sure. I've heard that it can get pretty loud sometimes. Actually, what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to change to one of my favorite soundtracks, since we're going to spend a little bit of time on the ghost method. I actually don't think I'm going to delete and re-upload this live stream. <laughs> I think you guys would prefer that, right? Seeing the whole thing, being able to watch the whole thing afterwards instead of me clipping it up. Okay, so the ghost method. <laughs> oh, I wish I could play Studio Ghibli on here, but I'll get copyright striked. So the ghost method, oh, let me add her in here is using everything you know all the techniques but it requires you to have drawn enough hair so that and it basically the ghost method is all of the other techniques but you also do a lot of blending and you do that because you're trying to get something to latch on to that can give you an idea for what the hair should look like. There's a lot of time where I accidentally work on something and I see something that starts to look really realistic and then I start going heavy in that area. So for this, this would be the prerequisite for the ghost method. Like, um, to do this, how I started this was I started blocking out some color. Um, where's the time lapse? So you can see at some point I just used my flat brush and I just started stroking, doing hair strokes. But if you look closely, like that, that, those like highlights and overlapped areas started to show up. And so I would go back in and kind of attack that area and add some, um, some hair strokes in there to kind of make it pop. So you can see, let me see if you guys can see it. You can see I start adding lines there and I start getting informed by that delicate stuff that I saw there. So when I did those strokes, it looked like some hair strands were over and some hair strands were, some chunks of hair were behind. And so I would continue to embellish that and I was using that to inform where these cuts should be. I'm using a lot of designer language saying the word inform. <laughs> um, so that's kind of how I did that, and I left it to be to look like her hair is fading into white on the tips and on the top of her head. Because I didn't I didn't have that intention when I was going into it. So this this type of technique is good for hair where it's really messy, really crazy. There's not really any clear shapes. Um, the only clear shapes you can see are um, these two tufts of hair, these two parts the bun and then this overall part and then everything else gets really messy like stuff like that it's like hard to just it's hard to draw that properly so i would first start with I'm on the wrong layer here start with the basic shapes um like that get the band in Again, always emphasizing that you use quick strokes. Don't focus on making them right, but quick strokes like that are really good um, for your art. Um, I'm going to hide this. And so what I would do is I would start using everything that I know. So if I were going to start this hair off, first thing I would do is I would make a new layer under it and start off with a canvas that has some tone on it. Because we see this is really light hair, and how light hair is d difficult to draw for most people because it's easy to run out of values. So I'm already going to say, hey, even though this hair looks like it's almost white, I'm going to use quite a dark value to start off with. An even better way to do this is to just make the whole canvas not white in the background. But this works um, just as well. So I'm gonna start off like that, and I'm gonna say that's going to be our kind of our base color. Actually, I feel like is that dark enough? We have two more values. 
15 units. I'm going to use one more. Value. Now this is basically the foundation for the deepest, darkest parts. Um, but we will come back and fill those in later. So I'm going to take a value above that. And I'm going to start with the volume brush. And I'm going to paint in the bigger chunks. Like you see, it kind of has that curved shape, so I'm just gonna go in and add that in. And I'm going to merge these layers now. I see these different kind of arcing shapes, so I'm going to use a hefty brush and just add those in there. Now these are the brightest parts of the head, but we're going to paint them with a very big brush so that they start to overlap with the um, mid-tones. I'm painting the biggest shapes I can see, just trying to get them started. Did I not merge these layers yet? Oh, I thought I did. Do this right here. Oh, I'm using the tone that's already too light. I'm gonna come back and do this in between those hairs. This looks really messy and crazy now, but. Watch what happens when we uh, bring out the really nice brushes. So now I'm already starting to see that this looks like hair that's overlapping um, in that area, so I'm feeling good about that area. And I'm going to take this lighter tone and kind of draw this tuft of hair out. Focus on this strand right here. Just trying to block in values here. And so now what I'm going to do is use my um, different various hairbrushes to block in the shapes. I mean, to, to blend these tones together. And so I think I'm gonna do my fantasy brush here. And just starting to get things to look more like hair. I'm always paying attention to where the hair movement, the direction of the hair is going. Everything here is kind of going back to this point. So I'm not, I'm not gonna let my brushes not follow that shape.
Does my iPad lag? No. Um, not unless I use really large 8,000 by 6,000 canvases. I'm just trying to blend those hair strokes together. I mean, those tones together, not hair strokes. We don't have any of those yet. Because we want a good foundation of a lot of different value changes to um, help give me some kind of creative insight into how to attack the different parts. So now, looking into it, this area has like the most consistent information here, so I can go into and start using some of the um, chunk method here. Oh, the stream? Does the stream have lag? Let me check out the stream and see. Hmm. It looks to be pretty consistent. So when it comes to drawing individual strokes, I found one of the best brushes for that is this brush, the hair strand brush, or my brush, my best brush, not the best brushes. <laughs> oh, well. Because when you draw it, the stroke looks a lot like hair rather than um, using just a regular sketching brush. So you can do things like this. And I'm seeing like these different layers start to come off. And I'm, I think I'm going to focus on this area to give you guys the best bang for your buck. Because I can't spend in a whole other <laughs> 90 minutes drawing the rest of this hair. But yeah. Always using loose strokes. I know that the light is coming from the top, so I'm adding more light down here and some rim light at the top for that stroke. Same down here. It would have been a lot easier to do a whole canvas that was darker. Oh well. I think I'm gonna do that because a lot of the highlights are kind of disappearing. layers in, in the background. Right now, this playlist, yeah, I can share this playlist.
That's what I'm listening to right now. Zelda. Chill Beats soundtrack. <laughs> I was so glad when I found out that I could play it and it wasn't copyright protected. Because it's really, really nice. As you can see here, I'm starting to see some good areas for um, deeper hair that's in the background and then hair that's in the foreground to come out. And so that's what I meant by the ghost method. Like it's a lot of using all of the techniques to um, work with the hair. And it requires you to kind of know kind of how hair flows to be able to identify these areas and then come back and really start to fill them in and detail them. And it requires a little bit of drawing experience as well because it takes some confidence to be able to know that eventually you're going to get something that looks good but in the meantime it might look kind of weird or it looks really bad but you know that um, you need to just keep working at it which is how drawing people in general kind of is you'll see even some of the best artists when they start off the face is like can look completely wrong or the face will be green, depending on if they're coloring it as they go. And they don't, they don't have time to get upset because their face is green, but they know that eventually it's going to look right. Just got to have that trust. So if we zoom out, we see it's starting to look more like hair. Maybe not exactly like the reference, but that's price that comes with the ghost method. You're recognizing the hair isn't, um, it's not going to be worth it to copy the hair perfectly, but you can still use it as a reference and get it to look like the person that you're drawing or convey the same style that you're looking at. And the ghost method is really just for super realistic hair. If you're doing simpler hair, you can just break it down using like one of the other methods to understand it. Straight stroke brush is one of the brushes I use for straight hair. It's kind of self-explanatory, isn't it? Because it has a lot of texture in it. If I just do it down here, like that. like a very abrupt stroke end so I'm going to try and use my blending brush with my trunk brush to kind of even it out which is something I did a lot on my other portrait that I showed at the beginning of the stream 
So this area is kind of flat, so I'm going to come back and add some highlights to it. And we know the highlight is going to be on this end because right now this hair, if I were to draw it, the shape of that piece of hair is basically like this. If I were to draw, cut through it with a knife, the, the cross section would look like this. that and so since light is coming down that side of the hair is going to get the most light so that's why when I do some highlights I'm going to focus on that area I turn the canvas around so I can use my most natural stroke directions to work with the hair. You don't want to do it forced because it's going to show and make the hair look more less natural. Right here I can kind of get an idea for how the hair, this hair wants to look. So it looks like there's a piece that has a highlight here and then is receding into darkness. So I'm going to embellish that. So that's why I have it called the ghost method, because it's like something that you can kind of see, but isn't really there. And so that you kind of coax it to come out and become reality. So I'm getting some deeper values in there. This is where using the layer method would have helped because now I want to add more deeper values behind those really like big highlights, but I'm just going to sacrifice it and come back to them later. Thank you, uh, Charlie. I'm not going to finish the whole thing, but I want to get it to a point where I feel happy with that I can leave it up to all you thousands of viewers out there. <laughs> I'm gonna come back and try to rescue those areas that I messed up. <laughs> you kinda get it, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, if you can just master the first method I showed, you will be set. Because it's really the foundation of hair. Understanding it in chunks and being able to look at it as a solid shape so that you can understand how to light it. Light hair is one of the hardest hairs for you. Any, I think anyone to draw because the values are just so, you gotta be really subtle with how you arrange the values. So like this area right here looks like it's just soft, softly shaded. So what I'm going to do is blend it out and then add some more um, either darker tones or highlights to it and it looks like I should add highlights because of that's where a lot of the light is hitting so I'm gonna use my chunk brush to give me a, get my feet wet kind of in this area lightly inform where I should add some highlights look at this bended area any bended surface are gonna be where your main highlight should be some of them down manually 
Add some flyaway hairs. Helps to use the brush strand, hair strand brush for that so that they look natural when they come to an end. drink any water since I've been talking for 90 minutes. <laughs> Lots of undoes, yeah. Hope you guys can't hear me. Why am I using white? Because I, I do feel free to use white when I'm doing very light things and I always come back and forth and I'll darken everything and come back and work on it more. So like for example with this, I don't think I'll darken it but what I'll often do is um, go to the curves and kind of readjust where I want the darkest values to be and the lightest values to be. I think the light values are pretty well done right there. So it still looks a little fuzzy, but that's how I would keep working with it. So like, for example, here, I tried to get rid of any fuzzy areas. Um, and you can see everything is basically a full sized, a full stroke, um, whether it was with a big flat brush or a, um, a very small accurate brush I didn't want to leave any fuzzy blended areas if I could I'll show you what that looked like with the time-lapse oh that's the wrong the wrong canvas it's this one so when I say fuzzy area So you can kind of see what I did here. This was a silhouette method. And you can see I was using layers to add the hair in the back. Um, so you see the fuzzy areas like that. See how they're still fuzzy. Um, areas like that are still kind of blurry. It's hard to show and keep the video from progressing. Like that, still very fuzzy in that area. And then I come, I blend it out again, cause I notice this kind of looks weird, like there's strokes going everywhere. So I blend it out, then I come back um, and eventually connect everything. I broke it up into different canvases because I wanted to do two looks, if you see my post on Instagram. So you see everything flows nicely now. And the, anything that's really blurry is still in the far background. Um, which is how things should be. You don't want a lot of contrast. You want to keep your contrast in the foreground and the most contrast where it's very bright. And when I say contrast in that case, I mean visual contrast, not necessarily values. How often do I do live streams, Alexander? Um, pretty often. <laughs> um, almost every Monday at 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern, and then almost every Saturday. And then I'll have some live streams here or there. Me doing a live stream on a Sunday is pretty ra rare for me. So, um, yeah. So I think I'm going to finish up with this as my final example of the ghost method. Um, if I go through everything, actually I'm not gonna go through this too many layers, <laughs> but I think I'm gonna end the stream here, guys. So I hope you guys learned a lot and I will post the brushes one last time in case any of you haven't gotten them. But as soon as the stream is over, oh, that's not the right link. As soon as the stream is over, the brushes will be available. So make sure to download them. Um, I guess I'll leave the stream going for like five minutes and answer questions so that you guys can, so that you guys can download the brushes. Alfonso done. I get compared to him so many times. Um, <laughs> am I? Or maybe 
Hey, what is up you guys? MKBHD here. This is the iPad Pro. <laughs> I could be MKBHD. I could be the your average consumer. <laughs> um, no problem, Charlie. And no problem, Beryl. <laughs> I hope any of some of you know MKBHD, because it's gonna sound weird. <laughs> you join too late but don't worry this entire stream is going to be um, uploaded immediately after I'm not going to edit it or crop anything out um, I want it to be very beneficial to you guys uh, I'm gonna put my overlay up again if you want to check out my other brushes they are on sale on my gum road here if you want to look at my art, you can check out my Instagram right here. And then if you want to support me on Patreon, right here. I upload um, full res images of all my artwork, time lapse videos, and um, you have access to all of my brushes. All right, see, Alexander. About two minutes, I guess. Or if anyone has any questions, I'll keep going for your two minutes ish patreon fam <laughs> yep let me let me end it with my uh my most recent painting that i'm so proud of how long did this take me let's check it so i'm gonna add a few minutes or a few hours to this, maybe one hour to the final time. So this took eight hours to do exactly. So probably like eight hours and 30 minutes. If you wanna install the brushes, you want to um, go to brush here, make sure in the main menu, hit the plus icon and then import. And then hopefully you can use Dropbox or your iCloud and you download them there and then you'll be able to click on there to download them um, or you download them to your computer plug in your iPad and then drag them to a folder and then once you do that you'll be able to once you get into this brush menu you can click on whatever if you had added them to the procreate folder you could just bring them in like that how old am I 50k face reveal confirmed yes confirmed <laughs> I am 24. What would I consider my best work? <sighs> I think overall it would be my traditional Judge But Not Tried series that you can see if you look at my video on my old art. If you're new, welcome. Welcome, Nora. You can be here. What challenges have I faced when working professionally? I don't think I'm working professionally now. <laughs> um, challenges would be like... Some, I guess, mental challenges would be trying to focus on your own stuff without getting distracted and getting sad about looking at other people's art, and then planning your goals on what you want to focus on. It's it's hard to, it's really hard to set goals that are specific, and you, you kind of want to do everything. Um, yeah. And what artists inspire you? I'll answer this as my last question. See, you, Axel. Um, Artists that inspired me a lot from the beginning would be Art Germ. He not only does his style inspire me, but like his mindset about um, art and building an art community really helped me. I watched a lot of his live streams um, in college, in between classes. And who else? Ross Draws inspires me a lot. Um, and who else can I think of that was specific? Um, just the a lot of the older pencil artists that I looked at to help me get my initial skills when I do do, you know, the very basic gridded um, pencil portraits. I did that a lot. <laughs> You're like Rostros. Hmm, he's a good guy, even though he's he's still great. He's still a great artist, and he's, he still cares about representing people now. <laughs> oh, Bob Ross. Yeah, of course. 
probably the most. Go if yeah, Bob Ross's documentary. I watched that recently. Huge, huge um, inspiration to me. Like, there's so many things I learned about him and his in his documentary that I was like, not only am I doing a little bit of that now, but like I want to follow his footsteps and how how he approached things because a lot of people think like he struggled so much to get to where he was like but his mindset about it was super like it was perfect it's like that's exactly how you need to approach things to get to not only have a good art skill but to be able to help so many people it was really great um yeah happy trees happy trees and uh i guess i'll i'll end this uh live stream by cleaning my brush here let me get rid of the overlay thank you all for watching and uh i'm gonna clean my brush really quick and uh yeah i will see you in the next video peace